Okay, if we had to go ahead and change our hammers because they're either showing signs of wear or that something had happened inside where something foreign got inside and had damaged one of them, if you pan over to here, I'm going to show you really quick. We have these cutouts here on this side here and over on the drive side as well too. These cutouts will also, there's, they're drilled and tapped here. There'll be a sheet metal piece that's gonna go over there to cover that once you're running it in operation so we can't get any fingers or anything inside and material won't come out. But those are there for, if we're going to go ahead and change the hammers because the hammers are on pins themselves. So those pins, as you can see right now in this cutout, there's a lock and collar here and it has, each pin has its lock and collar on both sides. That's holding that pin into place. So if I go to change the hammers, I'm going to remove this lock collar. Once this lock collar, or if we were doing it in this aspect, we're gonna wanna loosen the drive side lock collar. Once that lock and collar is removed, I can simply go ahead and start pulling. Sometimes on this side, what you might have to do is with a dowel pin or a screwdriver, is get it into that slot that you'll see is machined out for that pin to fit in. And you might have to kind of tap that pin a little bit that way. Now what happens a lot of the times, depending on the material that you're running, corn or anything that has moisture or any type of stickiness or tackiness to it, it's going to end up finding its way in between the hammers and spacers that are on your rotor. It's good practice over time to periodically open up, your, uh, open up the door and take a look and see if there's any hammers that are getting stuck because material is finding its way inside those spacers or hammers. Also, if you're seeing that, those, that material could be getting in between the spacers and the pin and as this, the rotor is rotating and you have that force, it could be wearing that pin as well. So you want to pay attention to that if you're starting to see hammers stick or material that's inside those spacers or hammers because we don't want to damage those pins and we don't want to have those wearing. And also with not having those pins where you might start to see your spacers wear as well too because of the friction and force that's going on when these are the rotors going. The other aspect of these hammers getting stuck is we want these hammers to be freely spinning at all times because when it's in operation, that hammer is going to be extended straight out. And if we have hammers that are getting stuck that aren't being able to suspend straight out, that's going to affect your cut and your grind. If we have hammers, some of them are like, you know, suspended up, some of them are down or not even popping back up once this thing gets turned on, it's going to affect your grind and you're, wanna, you're going to want to go ahead and work those free so that they're able to spin. And when I mean freely spin, as you can, as you rotate it by hand, you could see that all, all of my hammers are freely spinning and none of them are stuck. You'll hear your hammer is hitting the plate, the, the, the tube and the plate in the middle in between the spacers on the rotor itself. So once we got the lock and collar off on this side, we have the pin out. Basically what we're doing to change the hammers and to make sure that you're doing it effectively is you can either have somebody helping you or you could be doing it by yourself depending on the size of the machine. Also, as I forgot to state, before we go ahead and put our hands in any type of machine, make sure that it's either completely unplugged or you put your lockout tag out on it for safety aspects. We never want to put our hands or any type of our body inside this machine unless it's been turned off and we know that it's not going to turn on. Once this pin is removed, we're going to start simply removing it out this way and as we're removing it, we're going to try to grab the spacers and the hammers as we're removing it. Now, when doing this and changing the hammers, if you're putting in the same exact style hammers, you're just replacing them because they're worn. You know, to do this in a timely manner as you're taking the spacers off, you might want to stagger them or set them in a, in a sequence where you know they're going to get put back on when you take that pin, when you take off, completely remove this and put your new hammers on because you're going to be using the same spacers. Now, keep in mind that when you take these spacers and hammers off, this is going to be a time when we're going to want to check that pin that's inside there. If we start to see some scoring, some rounding, or if it looks like it's getting worn on that pin, it's probably a good idea to just take the pin out and replace it 
and if you're down or you don't have any contact us so that we can get those out to you because we do not want any wear or any damage to that pin now once we have that all out and we have our spacers how the hammers get installed is based off of the pattern or the print that was sent to you when you bought the equipment because they all have different standard sizes where as I talked before in a video where we can go fine or coarse there's coated hammers there's non coated hammers we have quarter inch thickness we have eighth inch thickness we have different thicknesses we have all different types and styles of hammers that we can put inside of our machine so it's very imperative that you're paying attention to not only having the print to reinstall your hammers and your spacers because your spacers are going to have different spacing depending on the pin and that's in a sense so that we cannot come in contact with a hammer from another pin so not all the spacing is going to be the same so it's very imperative when you start off if you're doing it all over again you can start fresh because you know you're removing all of them but on the print itself that comes from you, you'll see it'll have the different sizes and how many different spacers. So we're gonna wanna pay attention to that when we're reinstalling those and putting the right spacer and the hammer sequence based off of that print. And then depending on how many pins you have is where you're gonna start off on the print. You'll see on our prints it'll have pin one and three and two and four if it had four pins. Or on this one, I believe there is three pins on this rotor. So you're gonna have pin one, two, and three. But as I stated, each pin might have a different sequence as far as spacers and hammers. So please pay attention to that as you're installing it and make sure that you're doing it the right way from starting, you know, as you have, I usually try to have the print in front of me on the door as I'm doing it and don't try to rush or just assume that the spacers, you know, you're eyeballing it because if it's off just a little bit because some spacers can be uh, you know just a sixteenth of an inch difference and it might look like they're the same but they're not and if we have any issues where we don't have the proper spacing we go to turn this on and these come into contact with each other there's going to be a, a, a big problem now once you get your new set your new set of hammers in as I stated before, as you can see here, we have lock and collars on this end and this end. That's to allow that the pin that's in there is not going to be able to slide or shift or come out and it's going to hold these hammers in place. So periodically over time, depending on whatever material you're running, you're going to want to check your hammers. If they have the coating, make sure that you still have the coating. Also checking the tips and the corners to make sure you still, it's still, uh, you still have a good point. They're not rounded. Also sometimes with the coating, it'll start eating away at the coating and then once it gets to the coating, it's gonna start eating the hammer itself and you might see a void or a hollow point inside those corners. Once you start seeing that, you're immediately gonna wanna go ahead and change your hammers because you are gonna, it's gonna affect your capacity as far as your throughput and it also is gonna affect your grind where you might start seeing it's a little bit coarse or you're not getting the finest that you got and if you do see that downstream, that would probably be your first checks and balance as far as go check and see what your hammer condition looks like. Be careful when you are changing the rotation, making sure that we're checking the vibration because when we balance these at our facility, we're balancing them in a sense of whatever direction that we were either instructed that's gonna be going in the field or you know whatever it was disclosed when they, they was purchased and how it's going to be set up inside your plant and how these are balances off of degree angle when we go ahead and put our correction weights on we're using an angle finder on the shaft itself and depending on the rotation those degree angles are where the correction weights are either welded or put can be you know opposite when you turn the rotation in the opposite way so you're going to want to go ahead and recheck the vibration or kind of simply take a look at it on the rotor itself there might be weights that are welded on there or there might be washers sometimes with the washers and how we balance them we will check the opposite way to see where it's at and hopefully that it falls in line where it's in the uh, uh, according vibration levels that we want to see our machines before they leave our facility now 
who are changing hammers and vibration and all that other aspect too. Um, we're also going to want to make sure that we're paying attention to our couplings. As I was talking earlier in the video, if we had to go ahead and change the bearings, if we are loosening the motor, we're going to pay attention to our shims that we have. And then if we did get back to the aspect where we are going to uh, change the hammers and check the vibration, let's check our coupling. If we did have to remove their motor, maybe we had to do a complete hammer change and we did bearings at the time. If that's the case, we're going to want to get our laser alignment tool out. Once we get our motor back in place, as I stated, when it leaves our factory, all the soft footing, proper shims, and alignment is going to be there for you. As long as you're following and putting back what we had on, you're still going to have to do your checks and balances, but make sure that we're using our laser alignment tool on our motor and our rotor and getting that all lined up once we get everything back to what we believe is from the factory and you should be able to get that all squared away and make sure that we have good alignment on our shafts. Once we make sure that we have this situated, we have our hammers changed, we're going to get the unit back ready to go, turn it on and we're simply going to check our vibration. So once we get all that checked and we have our motor locked down, we checked our laser alignment, we're all laser aligned, we're properly good there. We have our new hammers in, everything's tight. It's also a good practice to go over and make sure those locking collars on those pins are properly tightened. Don't want any of those coming loose. Once we would have our screen back here installed, we're gonna close this door. And if we come around on this side, properly tightening these doors, we're gonna go ahead and simply tighten them by hand a little bit. Once we get them tightened by hand, Take an adjustable wrench and we're simply, we don't have to get crazy with it and really tighten it down, but as you can see, there's a gasket that's here on this part of the door, along the bottom and on this side, and there's a gasket on the top. We're just making sure that we're tightening that down to get the proper seal that we need for the door to the body and making sure that we have no leaks because if we have leaks in any of those areas where those gaskets are supposed to be, especially with running this through gravity, and when I say gravity, meaning that there's no air being hooked up to it and, and assisting the material being pulled out, and we're just simply feeding in, and gravity meaning that it's getting through the screen and dumping down into whatever you're collecting it. If you don't have the gaskets and the doors tightened properly, once you go to run that, you're gonna start seeing material flooding out in areas where you probably don't wanna